All right, guys, so we're going to implement the play command. So this is going to be pretty straightforward. We're just going to copy the same structure and rename this to play command. OK, let's name it to play. So for the play command, this is going to actually play the music. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that they can actually search for songs as well. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's get rid of all of this stuff. OK. And for example, right now we have our command handler set up so that if they uh, type uh, arguments, it's going to return it as an array. So we have to join that array together. So if I do console log query, okay, if I run my bot and if I do play hello world, it should just return as a string hello world. Because remember, these arguments are being separated with a space, okay? So remember, args is an array, okay? So that's why we're doing args.join, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if the user is in the voice channel. So const channel, we're going to get the voice channel that the user is in. So message.member.voice. And if the channel exists, if the channel is a truthy value, what we're going to do is we're going to search for their query. Okay, so we're going to make it so they can search. So we'll do const search results equals await. Oh, okay, so we're going to reference the music client. Remember, client.music, I'm going to keep repeating this, is the Arella client. Okay, and the Arella client has a search function that we can use to search for our songs. So we're going to pass in query. Remember, query is our search. And we're going to pass in message the author because we need to pass in the author that corresponds to the search. Now, if I go ahead and if I log this to the console, okay, and if I restart my bot now, if I do play, uh, if I do, uh, let's see. Um, now, it should not do anything. Oh, it actually did something. Oh, yeah, because we are in a channel. I forgot. Okay, see how it returns all of these tracks. Okay, it returns a lot. But you can see we have all the track data. Okay, and it gives you a lot of different information, the title, the uh, duration, the URI, um, if it's seekable, identifier, all of these things. All right, so if I also do track results dot tracks dot length. Okay, so let's try this play cartoon following. You can see we have 29 tracks. Okay, so we don't really need 29 tracks. So what we'll do is, I guess what we could do is we can create a new array or we can just slice those tracks. So we don't really need all of those 29 tracks. So we only really need maybe like 10 or five of them. So I'll do const tracks equals search results dot tracks dot slice and we're gonna get uh let's get 10 of them okay so next i want to get the string of every single track so i want to just get the url as well as the title so to do that we're gonna go and say const let's call it track info tracks info equals and we're gonna go ahead and do tracks and we're going to map every single result. And what we want to do is we want to return the number with the uh, title and the URL. So for example, if I just did this, this is going to give us the title with the URL because we're mapping every, we're mapping through the tracks array. And for every single track that's inside this tracks array we are returning a string we're, re we're basically returning a new array and each element is just going to be the title of the track with the url okay so if you don't know how map works i would highly suggest you learn how it works and so since map returns an array we're going to join it with a new line character so if i were to log this to the console uh, let's do play you can see we have everything here. Okay, but we want the user to be able to select the track. Okay, so I want to give it a number. So the best thing that we could do is I'm going to go ahead and declare a variable up here. So let i equal zero. And we're going to go inside here and we're just going to use a prefix increment operator. So this will increment i, okay, to one and two, three, four, every single time we iterate through every single element in map. So if I continue, 
let's go ahead and actually send all the stuff in an embed message. So embed equals new message embed. So we actually need to import message embed. So let's do that. And let's go ahead and set the author. We'll set this to, let's see, message. Let's set, We'll set the author to client.user.tag and then client.user.display avatar URL for the URL. We're also going to set the description. So the description is going to be tracks info. Uh, we'll set a color too if we want. We're, we're not going to do it for now. Let's just do set footer music results. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and send the message to the channel. Okay, and we should see all of our results. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Perfect. All right, and from here, what we want to do is we want the user to be able to select either from one to ten. So we need to await messages. Okay, we need to wait for the user to send the message. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do a simple const response. So I'm actually going to use async await. So I have async already in front of my run function. So we're gonna do const response equals await message dot channel dot await messages. So we're gonna need a filter and we're also gonna need some options. Okay, so the way await messages works is let's say for example, if uh, I send a message and a bot sends a message, the bot is going to like ask us a question, for example. It's gonna wait for us to send a message before it continues on what it's doing. So it's a good way to create prompts and questions and quiz bots and you know things like that. So we're gonna create a filter first because we need to filter out certain messages. So const filter equals m. So this is just a simple arrow function. This m is the parameter, it's the message object. So that's the message that's being passed into the filter function. We want to make sure that the author, so message .author .id is equal to mess to m .author .id. So we want to make sure that the person who invoked the play command is the same person that is sending the uh, that is selecting the uh, songs to be played. So we need to make sure that's true, and we also want to make sure that uh let's see we want to make sure that they're submitting a number that is between uh one or including one all the way up to the size of our array because like i said it's not always going to be the case where we're going to have 10 tracks sometimes our search result is very specific we might have like only three tracks so the max that they should be able to pick is three so we're going to go ahead and select or we'll have them select from we're going to do m dot contents. Well, let's do it. Yeah, m dot contents. So we're going to make sure it's less than. So we're going to check to see if m dot content is greater than or equal to one. And we also need to make sure that it's also less than tracks dot length. And I need to wrap this inside there okay and let's go ahead and pass in that filter let's pass in our options so I'll actually do that right over here I kind of don't want to keep everything on the same line so we'll do it over here uh, max we'll do one for the max and for time we'll just do uh, we'll do 10,000 or yeah 10,000 milliseconds and errors time okay all right so uh let's see here's what i'm gonna do if response so if the response exists we're gonna get the actual player's response or the entry so we're gonna do const entry equals response dot first this is gonna give us the first message that the user sent and we want to reference the content and from here we're gonna go and get the player that we had created in join okay remember why i said we needed this music players map because we need to get that specific player we don't want to create a new player we want to get the player that we already created when we call the spawn method so we're going to do const player is equal to client 
music.players.get and since it's met by its ID, we can just do message not guild.id and that's gonna get us the player. Okay, and I should also do this. Let me actually wrap this inside try catch because an error might happen. Okay, so const player and we're gonna go ahead and allow them to select whichever one they want. They are gonna select and from here, what we wanna do is we just wanna add the track to the uh, queue. So before I do anything else, let me actually just console log entry. Okay. So if I select five, it should say five, but if I select something else, like let's say I did um, 11, it might throw an, yeah, it's not working. But what if I typed ADSD? Let's say if I type strings. What if I typed eight? There you go, but that ran out of time. So if I type this, if I type four, okay, there we go. Okay, cool. So I just want you want to make sure that this is an actual number. Oh, we actually forgot to make it less than or equal to. Okay, so cool. So now, uh, what we want to do next is we want to get the selection. So if they type five, right? Let's say if they type five, okay, they want to get this selection over here. We need to take that number and subtract one because this track is located at position four in our array. Remember, arrays start from zero. So we need to subtract one. So now we're just going to go ahead and say const track equals tracks. So we're referencing this tracks array up here. We're going to go ahead and do entry minus one. So that's going to get us the correct track. And now we're going to just add that track to the queue. So the player object has a queue property and the queue property has a add method. And we're just going to add the track. And then we're just going to go ahead and say message.channel.send. And we can send a bunch of other stuff too, but for now we'll just send the title. And uh, let's go ahead and also check to make sure that the player is not currently playing. Because if the, if the player is playing, then we don't want to affect it. So if the player is not playing, we're going to go ahead and do player.play. Let me actually move this to that line. Okay, so let's go and try this out. Length of undefined. Uh, what's going on? Oh, you know why? Because we didn't actually join the channel. So we are in the channel. Okay, we need to actually fix our join.js method later. But right now it's not working because we don't actually have the player that exists. Because we didn't actually... Because uh, we didn't actually trigger the join method. And it doesn't have this uh, music player. Okay, so let's just try this again. Let's disconnect. Let's do this. We need the bot to join first, okay? If the bot doesn't join, it's not going to create a player. So we have to fo we have to fix that later. Oh wait, it's okay. There we go. Okay, so we shouldn't get any issues. Perfect. We have the player. Select one. There we go. Let me actually lower this. Okay, so you can actually see the green circle around it. Let me actually unmute my volume. So hopefully you guys can hear this. Okay, it's playing a uh, cartoon howling and CS release. Hopefully I don't get copyright striked. So I think you guys get the idea. We can leave this on, but so if you guys want, just watch the live stream. I don't want to play the whole song because I think you guys get the idea. But if you don't believe me for some reason, just go check out the live stream. We, it's literally, I the code is literally identical, okay? But yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Just wanted to show you guys a simple play command. Obviously there are some things that we will need to tweak. But this is just the basics of it. Like I said, you want to make sure that your bot joins the voice channel first, okay? If the bot is not in the voice channel, then the play command should not work, okay? So that's pretty much it for this video. Um, I'll see you guys in my next one. Peace.